Hi, my name's Simon. Welcome to another video where I'm going to share with you some hints and tips about how you might use OBS to teach online using Skype or Zoom. Now, I teach on I use OBS with a green screen, which means that I've got uh, I do chroma keying with the green screen in order to create this transparent effect that you can see here. If I turn off the um, the particular filter. In fact, I'll show you how to do that and how I do that. I'll drag myself across. So if I just click uh, into that and I choose filters, you can see chroma key appears. So if I turn that off, you'll see straight away that there's a green screen behind me. And if I close that screen, then you'll see me, oh, in fact, if I move that across over here, then you'll see that there's a great big green screen behind me. So chroma keying allows me to get rid of that green screen. So I just pop that back on, turn on the chroma key again, job done and move OBS over there. So what does that look like in my office? What do I need? Because as soon as you think of green screens, you might think of these kind of elaborate Hollywood studios that you need lots of equipment, that it's really expensive, it's really difficult to set up and etc, etc. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Now, I am not, in many cases, a perfectionist. I like to think that I do my best when I'm teaching online, but in generally, as long as it gets the job done, then it works for me. And that approach has helped me in terms of using a green screen, because if I was looking for perfection, I would be tearing my hair out and I'm pretty sure I would be bald. So I need to organize things so it works. And that's it. And if it's working in the way that I want it, then I'm happy. And then if I've got time in the future, then I go through a number of uh, different things to, in order to see if I can make the effect better. And I started off working in my garage. I set up everything in my garage, the lighting, the green screen, and then I moved into a different room in my house. And now I decided I'm fed up of freezing during the winter. So I moved everything into my office relatively recently. And now I want to show you my setup in my office. So this is where I do all of my teaching. And I'm going to bring in the photograph now. There we go. That's where I am sitting right now. I'm just going to make that a tiny bit bigger if I can. OK, there we go. Or maybe I'll just drag it up by the ears here. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it is a bit of a hodgepodge job. And yes, it is. You can see that there's a backlight. If you follow the cursor, there's a backlight on the armchair, which is on. So I haven't got a stand for the backlight. You can see I've got one stand here, which is holding up one side of the green screen. On the other side, I'm not sure if you can make it out. There's a bit of wire, which is holding up my green screen to my curtain rail. So I don't have a stand here. In order to get the green screen in one place, I found a great big long cardboard roll and I just stapled the top of the green screen to it so it holds it up in place. And so it's behind me. It's not pretty, it's not Hollywood, but it works. In front of me, you can see a couple of different things and I'm just going to open up Epic Pen now. OK, so I've got the pen open. So you can see a couple of things behind me, uh, in front of me. You've got um, my first monitor, which is over here. Hang on a second, it'd be helpful if I changed the color, wouldn't it? There we go. So my first monitor is here. This is my main monitor. This is where I've got my virtual whiteboard in front of me. And sitting side on is um, a second monitor. This is where I keep all of my uh, work that I'm going to introduce in my lesson, so I just drag it across from one monitor to the other. And you can't see it right now, but on the wall, I've often talked about a third monitor, and it's normally attached to this thing here. Now, you can't see it, but above my monitor, about here, is my webcam. So it's right above my monitor, and I generally position Skype either just below it on that small window or just above it on the third monitor. So I'm looking directly into the camera. Um, and that's something I found is quite useful. For example, if I've got Skype, if my student is on my second monitor and I'm nonstop talking to my student looking at the different monitor, then the student is seeing the side of my face. So if I put the student as close to the web camera as possible, 
then it looks that much more natural. Now, what else is going on in my screen? Behind here is, or in here, this is my microphone. So I use a separate microphone uh, when I'm recording this video and I put the audio together with the video track on a separate piece of video editing software. I'll do another video about that video about that later on. But that sock is, I just made it by myself. I bought some acoustic sponge, I think it's called on uh, Polish eBay or Polish Allegro. I've wrapped it around the microphone. You can see these black lines here. That, that is electrical tape and I've just wrapped it around with electrical tape just to create a cocoon. And that, that eliminates a lot of the sound that my family makes in the corridor or when they're shouting and screaming and doing other things. So you can see here that this is a Hollywood effect done on a very, very modest Hollywood budget. And it's not professional. It's by no means the best setup. It's just a setup which allows me to get a green screen working and to get this effect when I'm doing online teaching with OBS. Now, how much would this normally cost? Well, there's a couple of things to take into account, so let me list them here. The first thing you've got to think about is your web camera. Now, you might have a web camera in your monitor. You, if you're using a laptop, then your web, you might have a web camera in your laptop. I, uh, because I'm doing lots of online teaching, at the time I bought the best web camera that, that was on the market that I could afford. And luckily, the, the market for web cameras isn't a crazy market. At the time I bought my web camera, which is a Logitech uh, C920, it was the best on the market. And it cost, I think, around about 300, some 350 Zs, I think it was around about 50, 60 quid, something like that. And even though it's old technology, you can still buy it on the market now. And the newer Log Logitechs, aren't that much better than the C920. So if, you, and you can find the C920 for a lot less now. So that web camera is something you might want to invest in. The C920 already ha has a built-in microphone, so you might not decide to buy another microphone. But I did uh, purely because I do so much recording and I put the two tracks together and the microphone uses a different program called Audacity and it's a slightly better program in terms of managing sound, but I'll do another video about that in the future. So a microphone might be another extra cost. You've got two monitors to think about. Um, so, but if you just go for a bare bones monitor without any bells and whistles, then this these are relatively cheap. And my third monitor is a monitor that I've had kicking around for years and years and years. Now, you might need some stands. If I bring back across my, my picture here, you can see that I've got some stands. I've got a stand here for this light. I've got a stand here for this light. Stands are not that expensive. And these were the cheapest stands that I could find on uh, Polish eBay or Polish Allegro. So this was just a matter of, I don't know, five pounds, 10 pounds, something like this. The green screen, once again, another five pounds, ten pounds. Some people see the, uh, some people buy really expensive green screens. Some people just use an old green curtain that they have. You'll see on YouTube how people do this. So me, I bought a green screen, and very often you can buy the green screen with stands. So job done, and you can buy this relatively cheaply. I think I, the cheapest I saw that set two stands and the green screen was around about 160 Zs on uh, Polish eBay, I think something. So this isn't crazy money either. You might want to think about lighting. Now, if you're gonna use a green screen, lighting is the most important thing. If you don't have lighting, good lighting, then getting the chroma key to work is a nightmare. I didn't want to go crazy on lighting because of course you can go crazy on lighting. So I bought the cheapest diffusers that I could find, which were around about five quid, 10 quid each, something like this. And I've found out that if I've got one on the back, let me get the pen out again. So this is what we'd call a backlight. This is for the green screen to try and provide a uniform color on the green screen. So this is useful. And one on the front, 
which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. Uh, you'll see on my videos on YouTube that sometimes I'm very gray, sometimes I'm full of color. So I, I tend, as I said, I'm not a perfectionist, so I don't want to spend hours and hours looking, uh, thinking about the color of my face. So I tend not to worry about lighting. I tend on my face, just will the lighting work in terms of the green screen? And if that works, then job done. In terms of the lighting in the room, then I've got about 300 watts, I think. I've got three 100 watt LED light bulbs. Um, do they give 300 watts? Probably not. So you need a fair amount of light and lighting is something that you'll have to play with. One thing that I've got here is this great big blackout curtain because I get, particularly in the morning, I get lots of sun through the window and it plays havoc with the, with the chroma key. So I needed to block out the light. So I just went onto Polish eBay. I found some guy selling scraps of blackout curtain. So this was another fiver, something like that. So you can see to achieve Hollywood effects, you really don't need to spend that much. And assuming that you don't buy the webcam, which is 40 or 50 quid, then you could probably get what you need for around about the same amount of money, I would imagine, 50, 60 quid, something like that. And if you've got good lighting at home, then you don't really need to worry about the lighting so much. If you've got green material, then that's fine. At the beginning of my adventures recording, I was using ladders, I was using bits of wood, I was using lots of different things just to get the effect right. I didn't want to, and lots of people do, fall into the trap of investing a whole load of money at the beginning and then wondering why it doesn't work. So um, start off humbly, start off modestly, and just try a few things Get the green screen first if you're interested in doing this, put it behind you, um, turn on the lights, open the curtains, close the curtains, see if you can get the chroma key to work. And if you get the chroma key to work, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, if you're fighting for perfection on a very small budget, take it from me, you're just wasting time and energy. If you have a look at a lot of my videos closely, you'll see that you'll see that there is this kind of fuzziness around my head or there's this kind of green halo around my head. Fine, I can live with this. I'm not producing material for Hollywood. I'm just worried about getting the effect right and providing good teaching, uh, a good teaching environment online. So there will be some give and take. And if you're not a perfectionist and you're just looking for an effect that works, then you can do this. If you're a perfectionist, well then life gets a little bit harder. Now, I know I've waffled on and on and on, but um, I hope that this video will be useful to you if you're thinking about doing a um, using green screens and using chroma keying through OBS to get this effect because it really does add a level of professionalism. It does have a great effect. When students see this straight away, then it always works. Uh, it always is um, it always re is received favorably. One thing that I do, and let me just remove all of this. One thing that I do very often is I just start off my Skype lessons like this. I make myself big, I turn off the display capture, and I start talking to my students like this. Hi, how are you doing? How can I help you? Why do you want to learn English? And then we have that conversation. And then during the lesson, what I do is I shrink myself down, I put myself into the corner, I turn on the display, and suddenly we go to work. And it gives a nice impression to the students and they seem to be impressed. We do lots of different things, drag in lots of materials. Well, you get the general idea. Okay, if you've got any questions at all about this, um, um, or if my, my wa uh, waffling away has confused you in any way, then leave a comment below and I will get back to you. If you've got any other questions about OBS uh, and how to use it in your online teaching, then leave a comment below and I'll try to produce content to help you out.